Hey everyone, welcome to another MLM Dumpster Fire. Today we're here to watch a Monate opportunity call from a rep that has been featured on my channel before. I'm pretty sure multiple times, usually in top MLM fails. This video is a little bit longer than her usual videos that I've covered at least. Before we get into it, don't forget to click the like and subscribe button if you would like to support my channel. That's the best free way to do it. And speaking of support, thank you to all my channel members. I really appreciate you guys. Let's get into the video. Good morning, hello. I am in my bathroom. As you can see, I'm gonna do my makeup. I'm gonna do a little get ready with me. And I don't know, I just had this like feeling of wanting to share more of my story with you, especially if you're new to my page. I feel like I just wanna share some, some facts and some transparency and just like maybe you can feel inspired by my journey. Um, and maybe we when they say you are hopefully going to be inspired by my journey, what I hear, and I'm sure many of you guys that are watching this video, is I'm going to share something really vulnerable and hope that someone out there that's watching this video might relate and then I'm going to tell them that Monate is the way to fix everything. So that's what I heard there. We just get to know each other. So hi, hello, thanks for being here. So. A little backstory on me, if you're new to my page, my name is Erica. I am from Pennsylvania originally. Um, I was actually born in California, um, but I grew up in Pennsylvania, so outside of Philadelphia by like an hour. Um, I grew up in a pretty small town, it was called and went to a small private school. I was actually homeschooled until I was... I really don't understand why did she have to dox herself completely. I don't know why they do this so casually on Instagram. I don't understand how do people think that a public social media profile is a safe space for them to share their locations and where they grew up. That's freaking dangerous. You never know who the hell is watching your stuff. Is in eighth grade. And then I went to a small private school. That's actually where I met my husband. Um, he and I met in homeroom in eighth grade. I was this like emo girl. I showed up with my, um, my like, what were they called? Those Adidas Sambas. I had my Adidas Sambas. It was a private school, so you had to wear skirts. I was wearing my Adidas Sambas. I was wearing a denim jacket. I was like super emo. I had band pins on my t-shirt. Um, and my husband was actually, um, his family founded the school. So he was like, everybody knew his name. Everybody knew who he was and that's how we met. But, um, kind of fast forward, my husband and I actually started dating in 10th grade. Y'all, we started dating in 10th grade. We were like little baby children. It was 2004. Okay. So I'm like dating myself. I'm about to turn 34 in a few weeks. Um, and so we met and started dating a couple years later and really we're honestly inseparable. We've been inseparable, inseparable since we went to college together and it wasn't even like an on purpose type of thing. It was more like we had friends who went to this school. So I'm from, um, so outside of stop doxing yourself online. We went to college and when I was in college was kind of, it was the first time in my life that I was obviously away from my family. And it was like the first time that I had a chance to kind of think about like what I wanted for my life and like what mattered to me and who I wanted to be and what I wanted my future to look like. And it was when I was in college, I started a blog. It was actually a fashion blog. It was called Style Activist. I majored in fashion merchandising and interior design. So that's what I was studying in school and I minored in journalism and Spanish. Um, I already was fluent in Spanish and fluent in Spanish. So I just wanted to get a minor for, for kicks. But I, um, and I was the, the vice president of our fashion association. So we hosted fashion shows at our school. I went to Liberty University, if anyone's heard of Liberty. So I just like realized when I was in school, like I was going to class and I was doing all these things and I started this online blog and I almost became like more obsessed with this online blog. I became more obsessed with like what I was creating and like the creativity 
I would come home every winter break and I would go to fashion uh, week. New York Fashion Week is always in February. So I would like stay a little later to go to that. LU alum, what's up? That's so cool. What year did you graduate? I graduated 2012. So I would then also, uh, Fashion Week was also in September. So I'd like come home and like I'd go to uh, Fashion Week in New York for that. And I just like felt so drawn to this world of bloggers because I saw these women like creating their own, their own careers from their phones. Well, at the time it wasn't even like really from their phones. It was like all on the internet, all on your desktop because we really didn't have like Instagram, I don't think was out right then. It's so crazy. Like I've literally been in this online space for so long. That's kind of sad because she seems to have um, the right idea, like to me personally. It's inspiring to me to see someone who works for themselves. There's a bird there, I got scared. I thought someone was looking at me. <laughs> I have to keep my shades open because if the room gets dark, my camera starts flickering. Blogging is one of the ways a lot of people started their entrepreneurship, I guess. She kind of had the right idea, but it's sad to see that she went from actually wanting to be an actual entrepreneur, even starting her own blog ending up being a scammer in a business model where the majority of people are doomed to fail where they don't make any profits so that's that's sad okay so for anyone who's like just getting started can i tell you that you have it so easy <laughs> like you literally have tiktok you have reels you have so much at your fingertips that like i didn't have because of all of like the development and technology, like literally now there's so much. I have a bookstagram, what does that mean? I don't know what that means, um, but that's awesome. I love books. Um, so I'm such a nerdy reader, but I remember like even at the time I was in college and I would have Kyle come over to my dorm or once I moved off campus, I'd have him come over to my apartment and come and take photos for me. So he would literally take my little like shoot, point and shoot camera I think it was like a little Canon that I had gotten at Costco one like summer break and I like brought it back to school and I was like, okay, you're gonna help me take my blog photos. And he's like, you're what? Like, what is a blog? And I, I have to dig up some of these old photos, you guys, like you have to see them. They're so funny. Like me sitting on the grass outside of my, my apartment um, it would be like in the middle of winter and I would still be like, no, we got to shoot. Like I got to put an outfit together and I'm a college student. So I don't have a lot of money. I didn't come from like a wealthy family or anything. My parents are always been hard workers, but I had to buy my own clothes and we at Liberty at college, we had a, I'm trying to find something specific. So let me see if I can find it. Um, we had a, uh, outlet. It was a J crew outlet. And the J Crew outlet was like where you could get really cute clothes, but really affordable. And I mean, I don't even think it was my style, but I would just go there because I'm like, well, I can buy like something that's different. We didn't even have like a legitimate mall where I went to school. So I was like, I'm just gonna like figure out whatever I can. There was no Amazon fashion. There was no, like half of the stuff we have today, there was no, like to know it was just coming out. Actually, I knew the girl who started, uh, Amber, who started it. And it was like this whole blogger world was becoming like a thing. And I remember just being so inspired and just being like, if I could just be like these girls and work online, like how cool would that be? Like then I wouldn't have to go and get a job for somebody. I wouldn't have to like go and apply to places. I wouldn't have to move away or like go to a city I don't actually wanna be in. Like I could choose what I wanted for my life. And that like opened the door for me to realizing that there could be a different way because you know, when you go to college, you go and you get your degree and then you're like, okay, I'm gonna go. And then after this, I'm gonna go and apply to jobs and like, we'll see, maybe I end up in a different city. Maybe I'm away from my family. And I was just like, I don't think I want that. I don't think I wanna do that. So maybe you're listening and you're like, I don't wanna do that either. Or maybe you're just like realizing that there is something else that you wanna do with your life. I'm using you guys as my mirror right here. There we go, there we go. We're turning to that direction. I just didn't wanna leave my family. I wanted to be nearby, which again, it's fine, but she's just trying to find people who don't want to go to work, who don't want to go to a different city, who don't want to commute. They want to be home with their kids or they want to live closer to their families. And this is where it's gonna be like Monate can do all of 
that for you. But shocker, spoiler, income disclosure statement is linked down below in the description box. The majority of the people that join Monet never make any profit. And this is not because they don't work or they're lazy or whatever. It's because the business model is set up so that the majority of people are gonna fail. You can only be successful in an MLM if it's a startup, if you're joining as a distributor when the company is only starting, or maybe if it's expanding to a different country or continent, or if you have a big following on social media and you can recruit a bunch of your followers. Those are the only few ways. There's a few others, like if you have an actual small business, then you join Monate or like a hair salon, and then you sell products to your clients and you recruit your clients from the actual small business. That's, I guess, one. For my brows, I just felt like there had to be a different way or a better way. So I really pursued that and it led me down a path of trying lots of things, trying and failing at lots of things. So I had my own um, online cookie business at one point. I sold cookies and I actually would ship them. I, I had it my own Instagram. It was, a, and it's probably still exists to this day. If you look it up, it was called Honest Goodness. And I would um, market my stuff on Instagram and it was very word of mouth and I would bake everything at my house in my parents' kitchen and I would ship it out. I like got all of my shipping, um, you know, like packaging and everything. I like got all of that online and I would ship all of it out by hand and I would write a little note to my customers. And, and then I realized, you know, do I really want to be a cookie maker? I don't think so. Like, I don't think this is my path, but like, we'll, we'll keep going. Right. And that's what I, what I want to encourage you. It's like, it's okay if you've done things before and if it didn't work out. It's okay if you've tried things and it wasn't your path. You know, like I do something so different today that I never imagined. I never imagined I'd be a shampoo girl. I never imagined that I would be... I never imagined that I would be a scammer in what resembles a product-based pyramid scheme. In my opinion, I'm just putting words in her mouth now. Someone who is a beauty influencer, quote unquote. I was not some beauty girl. I was a tomboy growing up. I was someone who loved uh, working out. I was a CrossFitter, so I was like usually sweaty and had my hair in a bun most of the time. And I wasn't some beauty girl. So please know that like if you've tried something before or if you're just like, sometimes it's just like we put our own limits on ourselves of what we think we can do. And it's like, why? Anything is possible. Like think outside the box. So anyways, fast forward, I graduate college. And I'm like, what do I want to do with my life? Anyone else had that experience? I was like, what do I want to do? I don't want to go and, and apply. And luckily my parents, because they were entrepreneurs, they owned small businesses and restaurants um, in my hometown. Because they were entrepreneurial minded, they didn't push me to go get a job. In fact, my mom was like, don't work for anyone, Erica. Like figure out something yourself. And they were very supportive of me figuring it out. And it was... 2014, and I, this was after many businesses and different try, trying things. I had my cookie business. My husband and I, Kyle, before we were even married, um, he, long story short, he ended up moving in with my parents and my family at our house because his family relocated to Florida. So we're all living and under the same roof, and we started our own uh, home gym. And we're like, maybe this is what we'll do. Maybe because we love fitness and we were trainers, maybe we'll become, you know, we'll own a gym one day. And so we had a, a little home gym. And we had people who would, who would come over. We would do like little group classes and we weren't making any money. You know, we spent all this money on gym equipment. We did not even recoup those costs, but that's okay. Like we tried it, you know, and we tried to see if this would be for us. There's also something I want to note here. Her parents were entrepreneurs. They were very supportive of her finding her own way to entrepreneurship, which again, it's very sad because she's not an entrepreneur. She's a 1099 contractor for Monate. She can be fired. She still works for someone else. She's not her own boss. It's not her business. So the irony, however, as well, they had the opportunity to live with her parents while they're trying out different stuff, which is not something that happens to a lot of the people a lot of the time you have to start making money and you have to start saving up money to be able to spending on even opening a home gym or anything like that you know what i'm getting at it it screams a little bit of a privilege because they did have the money and her parents had it they supported her financially and they lived with them it's not something that happens for i feel like the majority of people that you have your parents who are behind you and can financially support you in whatever you do like a lot of the people when they try to do their own thing 
they also have to hold a full-time job on the side because my parents couldn't pay for my apartment in Ireland or anything. I have to have my full-time job while I'm trying to work stuff on the side. She had a good chance. She had a good opportunity on finding something that works for her. But again, the irony is that she's not her own boss and this is not her business. She's an independent contractor for Monate, so. So there, that was one of our experiences. And then um, um, fast forward. Okay, so that was like 20, probably 2013. Fast forward to 2014 is when I realized that like, you know, I grew up in a small town. So I grew up in a small town where if, is anyone here a small town represent? Let me know in the comments if you're a small town, small town girl, because that was me. Um, I didn't like grow up around millionaires. I didn't grow up around people who are like entrepreneurs. It was a lot of teachers. It was a lot of nurses. It was a lot of, you know, state. Yeah, but your parents were entrepreneurs. So there's that. At home moms, which is all amazing, but I just knew in my heart, like I wanted something different. And I kind of just had this gut feeling that eventually I'd move away. I just knew, I was like, I think we'll move away one day and just kind of start our life somewhere else. And I love being from a small town. And it's funny because now we're like, gonna be building our home in a smaller town outside of Nashville because that's what we want for our children. But, and I see a lot of small town girls, yay. I love it, I love that for us. But um, I just remember being like, I think I need to like expand my beliefs around my life and like what's possible for me because I had a lot of limiting beliefs. Does anyone else re relate with this? Like I was very much like, I don't know, like it just felt like getting out of my small town, making more money, changing my life, doing something different felt like a big stretch in my mind. And so I was like, I need to like change my mindset. I need to work on my mindset. And it was 2014, I picked up my first like personal development book and it changed my whole life. It changed my entire life. And I'm telling you there is, I look, can look back at my journey and I can see certain decisions that I made ended up like changing the trajectory of my life. And that was one of them. I picked up the book, Think and Grow Rich um, by Napoleon Hill and I just devoured it. I just read it front to back and I didn't understand half of it. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't understand half of it, but I was like, I just know that if other people who have come from nothing can create something amazing, why can't I? And that's like a belief I wanna transfer to you of like, really, the truth is, is if someone else has done it, why not you? Why couldn't you do it? If someone else has made something of themselves and started a business and turned it into a, you know, whatever, why couldn't you? And so that, that like I know she's trying to be motivating but she's kind of shaming people who are okay with having a nine-to-five job or working in retail or anything like that you don't have to strive to be an entrepreneur you're not any less special or any less worth if you don't want to work for yourself but again the irony in this whole thing is that she's not an entrepreneur either she's an independent contractor for Monate which in my brain and it wasn't overnight it was a progressive thing I had to completely like relearn um, a lot of beliefs that I had, you know, I grew up and it was like very much taught like money doesn't grow in trees or maybe you've heard like, you know, people who are wealthy aren't good people or, you know, to make a lot of money, you have to work really, really hard or, you know, fill in the blank. Maybe you can share in the comments. What were some like money beliefs that you were told growing up? Uh, I was taught definitely more to but getting rich doesn't happen overnight. You have to work hard to get wealthy. Usually you have to work hard. I mean, and you don't even get wealthy either. Like I have, I work four jobs and I'm still not wealthy. I'm pretty average salary. What is she saying? Is this the get rich quick scheme? Is this turning into that? She's trying to imply that if you join Monate, you're not going to have to work hard, but you're going to get rich. Is that where we're going, Erica? Budget than necessarily um, go out and like create multiple income streams because that was just like what we grew up with, right? And that's okay, that's okay. Like there's no fault in that. People do what they have to do in order to get by, but I just felt like there had to be a better way. And so I ended up um, starting my own coaching business a couple years later and ended up getting into helping other people build their websites. And so much of this like new belief that I was creating was like, Oh my gosh, like what somebody makes in a year, someone else makes in a month. Like what's the difference there? You know, is it their mindset? Is it how they 
um, provide value in the, in the economy? Or is it, you know, I was just like, it was like my mind was just being blown open of what was possible. And here's what I want to say about money, because it's a topic that I really am passionate to talk about. Um, and I think that it's definitely a triggering conversation. And for a lot of people, it can be very triggering and depending on how you grew up, maybe you grew up and you didn't talk about money, or maybe you grew up and like money was a really painful conversation. And I can relate on a lot of those levels, but I love talking about money because I truly believe that women who make more money are women who can, you know, give more. The truth is, is that statistically it's proven that women who make more money typically are very altruistic and they give a lot of money away or they give back to their communities. I also think that there's an element of, you know, in marriages when your primary stress is money, um, what if that wasn't there anymore? What if you had the options and the choices of having the money that you guys need to not only fund your life, buy organic groceries, send your kids to the school that you want to, take your kids on, on vacation so that you can have those experiences? Like, Okay, so there we have it. This is her target audience, but indirectly targeting stay-at-home moms who don't make income on the side. What could life, how good can life get? And that's a question I like to ask myself all the time. Like, how good can this get? How good can life be? How good, how much can life surprise me and be even better than I imagined? It's all like in your mind, right? So I like the conversation on money because I want to encourage people to think outside the box and to think about like, what would you do if money wasn't an option or if it wasn't a, it wasn't an obstacle? What would you do with your life? What would you do if, you know, the money was there? Like, who would you give to? How, who would you spend time with? What would you do? How would you show up for yourself, show up for your family? Like, you know, and that's a huge reason that I am so driven today to help so many women create financial flexibility because I know what it's like to not have that. Um, Erica, the only person you're creating financial flexibility for is yourself because the majority of your downline are not making any profit. Those women are working for free so that you can enjoy your lavish lifestyle and build your house in a small town. You're not helping anyone other than yourself. And I think she knows that. I think she knows what she's doing. I don't think that she's brainwashed. And so kind of fast forward, I found myself, it was 2017, my husband and I, we were living in Charlotte, North Carolina at the time. And we were, oh, I gotta like fix that. This is like doing makeup without a mirror. I'm like this tiny little mirror that doesn't even work. Um, I need to set my makeup. Okay, we'll fix the, eye, the, the eyeshadow in a second or the uh, mascara, what am I saying? Multitasking, it's not easy. So anyways, it was 2017 where we found ourselves just honestly burnt out. We were, we had done everything that society told us to do. Society said, go to school, go to school. Society said, go get the job that, you know, is for your career. Kyle did that. We were, we were, we were burnt out. You guys, like literally we were like, we were strapped. We were, we were paying minimums on our credit cards. We were paying like the lowest amount of rent we could have been paying in our city at the time thinking like, okay, <laughs> Like you're working, I'm working. We're working as much as we possibly can. Yet there's more month at the end of. Are you working as much as you can? Because you didn't say that you got a job. You said your husband got a job, but not you. So what were you doing? There's more time at the end of the month than there is money. Like, what are we gonna do? We can't have a kid. Like we can't, like, how are we gonna get out of this? You know, we were, I'm very futuristic. So I was constantly thinking of like, what, what's life gonna look like if we don't change anything in a couple of years? It's gonna be the same and probably even worse. Like I was stressed to the max with that idea. So I started just praying. I started to ask God to literally be like, what should we do? Like, what should- This girl is like, oh my God, it looks like you're gonna to have to get an actual corporate job. And she's like, God, please, this is the time when I become religious and start praying to God to not make me have to go. <laughs> to her corporate job. I understand that not everyone can go off to work. The people have different circumstances and not everyone can work or not in every household. Both people can have jobs and it's not that easy to even find jobs. But Erica's not it. Her situation was not it. We do. How how should we like change the situation that we're in? And, um, it was so funny because a girl that I had met from Instagram, she had sent me samples for the shampoo brand and I was like, okay, that's cool. Like, 
I don't want to do, oh gosh, who's this person? We're going to, we're going to block you. Cool. I love that I can block you. Done. Bye. We can block the creepers now. I love that. Thank you, Instagram. Uh, a creeper on Instagram watching her live while she doxed herself 10 minutes ago to the creeper that was watching her. But back to what I was saying. <laughs> um, I just remember being like, I'm not happy with where our life is at currently. Not that I was unhappy in my life. I wasn't an unhappy person, but I was very much like, there has to be more to this. There has to be more to the life than this. There's more to life. Let me know in the comments if you agree, right? There's more to life than just going to work, paying bills, coming home, watching TV and living on repeat. Like there's more to life than that, right? We're using the rare beauty. Again, with the shaming, some people actually like that and some people don't want anything other than that. What is wrong with that? If you have a family, you enjoy chilling with your family at the evening. Like what is wrong with that? Especially if you work remotely, you have more time to chill with your family because you don't have to commute. Again, you can find a remote corporate job that's gonna pay you regularly, unlike Monet. Which by the way, Team Selena, I don't know if you guys are watching the drama unfold, but I am like, Selena is being bullied by these mean girls and I'm gonna buy her makeup because we support her. I will not stand for the mean girl stuff. Hold on, I need something really quick. Gotta get a Q-tip to fix these. Um, there we go. So anyways, I decided, it was 2017, I decided I was like done. I was done feeling burnt out. I was done feeling stressed out and I was done thinking that like life had to just be a certain way. And I was like, maybe this shampoo idea isn't such a bad idea. Maybe there's, you know, something to it because I was watching people and here's the thing. Okay. <laughs> Team Selena always. Yes. I am here for you. So, um, when you see successful people, Here's something that I've learned over the years, okay? Number one, successful people and people who are doing more than you are never going to try to drag you down. Successful people just, we don't, we don't, we don't roll like that. They don't roll like that, okay? So successful people want to help you. Successful people want to show you what's possible. Um, and then I need my little, hold on. We gotta, we gotta fix this lip liner. This is the best lip liner in the world. This is Charlotte Tilbury. And it is like, it cannot, there's nothing that is better than Charlotte Tilbury pillow talk. So we're just uh, gonna sharpen this good old pencil. So I was like watching these people be successful and I was like, okay, like success leaves clues, right? Like I was like, this looks just what they're doing with their life, how they're living, the time that they have with their family. That's what I want. That's the hack for success, you guys is find somebody else who has what you want to have and learn how they did it and follow in their footsteps. Success leaves clues. You will know the giant, you will know success by the targets or what is the quote? Oh, I'm going to butcher this. It's like, you will know them by the arrows in their back when it talks to success, talks about successful people. I butchered that. Okay. We're going to just pretend I didn't say that. But essentially what it means is like, you can, you can tell when someone's successful, you can see because it's, there's evidence. And so I was like, well, if other people are doing this, maybe I can, maybe I can follow. Yeah, but how many people in Monet specifically were successful, Erica? Because only a tiny percentage of all distributors are earning an income. The majority of them are failing. All in their footsteps. I don't know how to be a shampoo girl. I wasn't this beauty girl. I was feeling so insecure. This is also pillow talk. I was feeling so insecure. I was feeling so unsure of myself, but I was like, you know what? I'm unavailable to stay in this place because I want something better for my life. I, I am so available to learn. I'm so available to be coached. I'm so available to follow in somebody else's footsteps because I know where I'm at right now is not where I want to stay. And you have to get to that point in your life when you're going to try something new of like, I'm so available and willing to get so far out of my comfort zone but I'm following success. That's the thing. It's like, it's not, it's not like you're reinventing the wheel. So that was 2017 when I decided I was like, okay, I'm going to take, cause I had tried so many things and I had a successful business, but I was still feeling 
um, stressed financially and feeling just like there has to be more. And I felt like I wanted more purpose in my life. And I never thought it was going to come through shampoo. Never. But I was open-minded and I'm so glad that I was. We're going to air dry our hair today. So this is how it's going to look for now. Um, I was just like, I'm so available to be wrong about this whole thing. And almost like, I just want to like prove a point. Like, we're going to see if this shampoo thing really is what people say it is. We're going to see if it really can be something that's like worth my time. And it changed my entire life. It was September 2017. I started. And here's the thing about when you guys are starting a business or you're starting something new. If you half ass it, this could be your workout routine. This could be your business. If you half ass it, do not expect full results. Okay. If you are just like half way one toe in one toe out like i'm just gonna try it. if it doesn't work in six months i'm gonna quit like at least i'll have a plan b no 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 no. that is never gonna help you be successful i was like i'm gonna do this but i'm gonna do it like i'm gonna be the best i'm gonna like try as much okay half assing a workout is fine because you can't do a hundred percent all day every day also if you are not a particularly active person but you want to be half assing a workout is always better than doing no workout at all but also your business sure but monate is not your business you're an independent contractor as much as i can i'm gonna like i'm gonna make the short-term sacrifices for the long-term gain and i did that and i told my husband i said okay babe i'm gonna do this and in six months i'm gonna replace my income and i told him that i said i'm going to do this watch me and he was supportive it's not like i needed to, to prove to him anything but i needed to prove to myself and i also needed it to be successful because if i was gonna put time into it it, it had to work it just had to it had to work and it did it literally did it was within five months I replaced my my full-time income in my business um, and I was able to let go of some clients and, and really like step back and take a minute to assess, do I actually want to be coaching? Do I actually want to be doing this? The answer at the time is no. So I closed my coaching practice and within eight months, not only did I replace my income, but I replaced my income and my husband's income combined. Um, and once we were able to do that, I was like, babe, what do you want to do? I don't know if any of you are married, if you are, you know, you have a husband or a spouse or a partner that you're with and you're like, you would love to see that person that you're with that you love and adore so much to be able to feel fully fulfilled in what they do instead of just having to like, you know, hit the pavement and punch the clock. And once I was able to like see my husband step back, I mean, my husband is, if you would have known my husband five years ago, he was like a shell of a person. He was literally just... And he is the best employee. Like he's the person who will show up on time. He's the person who will go the extra mile. He's the person, he's like, he's a dream employee. And he would do that to a fault, almost to a point of like sacrificing his own. I'm pretty sure most employees show up on time every day. Happiness because he's like, this is my duty. I have to do it. I have to do it well. And that's like what he would have continued to do. He would have continued to just show up at that job until it would have killed him. Here's the thing that's crazy. I convinced him to leave his job and I convinced him to say like, let's get out of the city. It's not where we want to be. And that's another question. Anyone who's listening, if you could live anywhere, where would you live? If money wasn't an issue, money wasn't an obstacle, would you live somewhere different? Would you stay where you are? Maybe you would go somewhere else. We knew we were like, well, we're only here because of this job. You guys know what I'm gonna say. I would live in Japan if I could afford it. Oh, we gotta get out of here. This was not our place. It was not our forever place, that's for sure. Um, but it was when we were able to leave the city, we moved to Nashville in 2018. So we've only been here for like four years, which is crazy. It feels like it's been longer than that. Um, it's like I saw my husband come alive. I literally saw him and what's crazy is this, listen to this. So when we ended up, he ended up leaving his job. He ended up closing this chapter of his life. We ended up moving to Nashville. We, we packed up our whole life in a U-Haul with our two dogs. My parents came and helped us move. We moved, we drove the six hours from Charlotte, North Carolina to Tennessee, to Nashville, Tennessee. And I think I have a hair right here. It's driving me crazy. And yep, here it is. It's a little fuzzy. And a couple months later, we found out that the gym that he basically was like 
investing all of his time. They were selling the building and they were gonna build condos right on that place. The place that he put all this time, put all of this work, isn't even a building anymore, isn't even an establishment, isn't a business anymore. So thank goodness we took the leap. How many of you are waiting to take the leap because you're waiting for the right time? You're waiting for it to be perfect. You're waiting for it to be, you know, like all the stars to align. Newsflash, that's probably never gonna happen. It was such a like a move of faith that we had because I mean, on paper, you could have said, just be grateful. Why aren't you guys just grateful for what you have? You know, just, just, just stick it out, you know, cause that's what society tells you to do. We were like, no, this isn't gonna work for us. I mean, I'm definitely more of the pusher. My husband. You can be grateful, but also push for more. There's that. I would have stayed loyal to a fault and I would have just been like slowly dying. <laughs> but Kyle was open to me giving a suggestion to move. And you know, it, it changed our whole life. And, and the thing is that I want to say this, okay? As I end this, if anyone is um, wondering how I'm going to end this whole live. I'm just putting some lip oil really quick. It just keeps the lips hydrated. This is um, Monet's lip oil. It's actually not available for sale, but it's so nice and it like hydrates really well. So all I did today was I just did a base of like pigmented, where is it? It's the Merit stick. It's a concealer and like foundation stick. I did this and then I did a little bit of Glossier um, concealer under my eyes and then I just did a cream bronzer a lot of its merit but I've been really into like pigmented makeup if that makes sense um because I my skin like for some reason just absorbs things and this actually stays on my skin for a good amount of time plus it's like skincare for your skin and it just feels really good anyways I'll end with this saying this um and I lost my train of thought oh here's what I was gonna say so I think that like when you look back in your life, you can see the specific, you know, decisions that you've made and like where it's led you. And maybe right now you are facing a time where it's like time to make decisions again. And I look back and I'm like, it's the times that we like risked it all. <laughs> the times that we were like, we're packing it up. We're moving away. We're going to do something totally crazy that I'll never forget when we were actually, cause we've lived in Florida. We've lived in so many places y'all. When we were in Florida, we were packing up to move to Charlotte, North Carolina. We had hardly any money in the bank. And on paper, like none of it made sense for us to leave, but we just knew in our spirit, we knew in our heart that we had to go. And Kyle's mom was like, are you sure? Like you guys can stay here, don't move, just stay here. And it would have been easy. It would have been easy for us to just stay where we were and build a life because family was close by and they could have helped us out with things. But we just kind of knew, we were like, no, like we have to make this call. And it was those risky decisions that honestly built our character and built our, we were like so risk averse now. We're just like, was that the way, right way to say it? We're just like, risk doesn't even like affect us. We used to be risk averse is what I'm trying to say. Now I'm like, we're just so used to it. My husband does work, but he doesn't work for anybody. He works for himself. He does all of our investments. He does trading. Um, and we're also getting into real estate. So because I made this decision for the, to join this business, to do this business and dedicate the last five years to it, what is so beautiful about it? And here's, here's what I want to say, because you'll hear a lot of people say, you know, um, millionaires have it, have seven income streams. Have you ever heard that? Let me know in the comments if you've heard this, you know, millionaires have seven income streams. And I believe in multiple income streams a hundred percent. And today, uh, five years in my business, we have multiple income streams. But there's an element of when you start something, you have to give it focus. You have to give it intentionality. And there's an element- Is she implying that she's a millionaire? I think this part is her kind of implying that I'm a millionaire and I don't have seven income streams and you can do it too. If you join Monate, you can become a millionaire as well. Is that what I'm getting here? Element of like focus creates fortune, if that makes sense. So I want to encourage you to not feel like you need to do all of these things to start. Do one thing and get really good. Just had a notification pop up. Sorry about that. Anyways, I'm just rambling at this point, but I just wanted to share my story for anyone who's new here. Um, you know, in the last five years, I turned a risky in my mind at the time. It was risky. It really was no risk. I was buying shampoo products. Okay. It's not that big of a deal. If you are following me and if you're thinking about doing this with me, 
don't make it a bigger deal than it is, okay? Every person that you know washes their hair. You're literally talking about hair care products. If anything, it's a really great, fun way for me to feel like feminine and be able to talk about the things that I love to put in my hair and my skin. So it's not that big of a deal. Don't freak out, okay? Um, everyone that you know washes their hair already, so you literally could just hook them up with better products. But Okay, and not everyone wants to feel feminine. How do people go into debt then? How do people never make any profit? If you don't mind spending that much money on products, on shampoo and whatnot, whatever the fuck, Monet sells a lot of other stuff now as well, that's fine. But you're still wasting your free time, especially if you need or want more income. That's not what Monet is going to give to you. It's it's just not. It's It doesn't happen for the majority of the people that join. Um, If you've ever... If you've ever thought about doing this with me. I would love to have you. I'd love to do this with you. Um, but this is my story. My story is really one of like, I was in a place where I was uncertain. I was in a place where I was, I was struggling. We were definitely struggling financially and we were praying for something, but it was like delivered in such a different package than I ever imagined. So please know that sometimes I'm like, I look back and I'm like, did I dream of being a shampoo girl? No. Is shampoo my like biggest passion right now in my life? No. It's not, but you know what my passion is? Helping others. My passion is seeing other people become free financially. My passion is community. My passion is um, empowering women to take- Erica, it would be great if you can show us and give us the names of like the people in your downline who have become financially free thanks to Monet. That would be great if you can just show us some proof for these claims. Control of their finances. My, my passion is seeing people feel confidence when they like try the products and they start to see their hair transform. Like those are the things that light me up and make me feel so passionate. So if you're someone who you feel like you want to do something in your life that's purposeful and that gives you fulfillment, then I just keep getting notifications. You are literally, you have an opportunity that could potentially change things for you. I don't know. You have to do the work. I'm not saying I'm not guaranteeing anything. I worked my booty off, okay? And I'm I'm not saying that that has to be the way that you go about it, but if you want something to pay you like a business, you gotta treat it like a business. You have to. Um, but I also believe short-term sacrifices means long-term gain. The sacrifices that we made over the last five years have set us up for the next 10, 20 years of our life. Um, it's actually insane. That's a whole nother conversation for another day that I can get into. And we'll also be getting into on the podcast. So if you guys didn't see, I'm watching a podcast. Kyle and I are actually doing one together. Okay, Erica, that's enough. We have heard enough for today. She's kind of starting to piss me off and I still need to record one more video. So I don't want to be pissed off completely for the second one. <laughs> if I forgot to comment on something, please let me know down below. Cause she said a lot of BS and I feel like she was condescending and kind of rude to anyone who doesn't have the same goals or aspirations career-wise as herself but also the main irony is that she's talking about how she's an entrepreneur when she's actually not don't forget to click that like and subscribe button if you would like to support my channel that's the best nice free way to do so and as always big shout out to my channel members thank you guys for being here i will see you all in the next one bye